Senator from North Dakota. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise today to speak about jobs, about energy independence, and about good environmental stewardship for our country. I rise to speak about working with our strongest ally and trading partner, Canada. I rise to speak about moving forward on behalf of the American people, moving forward, not delaying, not failing to act in their best interests. Yesterday, Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper left for China. He left for China with five of his top ministers, including his Minister of Trade and his Minister of Natural Resources. He also took along 40 leading businessmen from Canada, including many of, the, of their leading businessmen in the area of energy and oil and gas. He left on a trade mission to China. And what's at the very top of his list, the very top of his list in this trade mission to China? It's selling oil, Canadian oil, to China. Why is that? The reason is because our current administration evidently would prefer that we buy oil from the Middle East and from Venezuela rather than buying oil from our closest friend and our number one trading partner, Canada. Now, that seems hard to believe. That seems hard to believe. But if not, how else can you explain the administration turning down the Keystone XL pipeline project after more than three years of study? Not 60 days. Not 60 days, more than three years of study. We recently passed legislation in this chamber and in the House. It was approved by the president. And in that legislation, we said that the president needs to make a decision on the Keystone XL pipeline within 60 days of the date of that legislation, but that's after three years of study. The administration came back and said, well, can't make a decision in 60 days, but forgot to mention that they've been looking at it for over three years. In fact, let's go through that timeline. I think it's important that the American people I think it's important that the American people understand the real timeline. The real timeline has nothing to do with 60 days. The real timeline is more than three years that a project has been held in limbo. September 19, 2008. September 19, 2008, TransCanada applies for a permit to build the Keystone XL pipeline. That's more than three years ago. Both the Environmental Protection Agency and the State Department said that they would have an answer on the project before the end of last year. Made very clear after going through the full NEPA process, including the full environmental impact statement, doing all of the due diligence, all the work over more than three year period, that they'd have an answer before the end of the year. But the administration says, nope, that's not enough time. We don't have enough time in more than three years to make a decision, so the decision is no. The decision is no. And you ask, well, why would that possibly be? Why would that be? Is this such a unique project that we've never done this before? That after more than three years of study, not 60 days, three years of study, that somehow this is so unique that we can't make a decision in that amount of time, so the administration says no. Well, on this chart, you see this red line. It runs from Hardisti, which is Alberta, Canada, all the way down to Patoka, Illinois, to refineries we have in this country. This is the Keystone Pipeline. That was approved in two years' time, roughly 2006 to 2008, and then constructed, and it now moves almost 600,000 barrels a day of oil from the Can Canadian oil sands down to our refineries. So that project already exists. We're talking about building a sister pipeline, the Keystone XL, that will bring oil from Calgary, Alberta area, from the Alberta area, province of Alberta in Canada, down to, our, down to Cushing, which is a major oil hub, and our refineries in the Gulf. So it's not a new concept. We're already doing it. 
This pipeline carries almost 600,000 barrels a day. The new pipeline would carry 830,000 barrels a day. And it's not just about Canada. It's not just about moving Canadian crude to our refineries. My home state of North Dakota and Montana produce oil as well. Light, sweet, Bakken crude, good stuff. We need to get that product to market as well. 100,000 barrels a day from North Dakota and Montana will go into this pipeline, 100,000 barrels a day. Now that's incredibly important to states like North Dakota and Montana because right now we have to move that product by truck and by train. And there's incredible wear and tear on our roads and with the congestion on our roads, there's also traffic accidents and traffic fatalities. 100,000 barrels a day represents 500 truckloads a day. 500 truckloads a day on some of our highways in western North Dakota and eastern Montana. This pipeline would reduce the number of truck miles to move that product by 17 million truck miles a year. So it's not just about moving that product from Canada to refineries, it's about moving our own crude, crude that we produce in this country to market. And our states need that vital infrastructure. And this is infrastructure that the, the government's not building this infrastructure. Not one penny of tax money, not one penny of federal government spending. This is a $7 billion plus investment from private industry from the private sector to give us the infrastructure we need to get our oil to our refineries. So it's not a new project. It's been done before. As a matter of fact, as my next chart shows, not only has this been done before, but this administration, the Obama administration, has approved similar projects before. They've approved similar projects. In August of 2009, the current administration approved a 1,000-mile pipeline that moves 800,000 barrels of oil a day that's, in, uh, that's working right now, that is moving oil right now. They approved this project August 2009. It came online in October 2010. It goes from province of Alberta down to refineries in Wisconsin. So they approved that project. They approved it in August of 2009. So what's going on here? Well, the issue that they've talked about said, well, we, we have to delay this because of the western Sand Hills region of Nebraska. The western Sand Hills region of Nebraska includes something called the Ogallala Aquifer. Now, the Ogallala Aquifer, obviously, very important for water supply and for irrigation. That's here in western Nebraska. So that's been, that concern has been raised. So we put forward legislation that addresses that issue. We put forward legislation that follows the lead of the state of Nebraska and says we will reroute the pipeline in Nebraska. For example, rerouting it over here where there's already the existing Keystone pipeline. But in the legislation that we've put forward, we say we will reroute the pipeline in Nebraska, that issue will be fully addressed and we do not set a timeline on doing it and we expressly provide that we work with the state of Nebraska to do it. Nebraska had a special session in November after their special session where we all agreed to do the rerouting, they came out. The state of Nebraska, their legislature and their governor and their senators support the project. They say yes, we need to move forward with the project. As you can see, there are many pipelines through there already. Nevertheless, we say, okay, the administration said that's an issue. We do the rerouting and we set no time limit to do it. So why aren't we proceeding with the project? What are we waiting for? And what are the ramifications of waiting? What are the ramifications of waiting? Look at all these pipelines. This is not a new concept. So. I take a step back to what I mentioned earlier. What's going on here? Why is it that Prime Minister Harper, the, the Prime Minister of Canada, is today, even as we meet here, he is today in China arranging to sell oil that they produce in Canada to China 
rather than to us in the United States, when we need it so badly, not just for our economy, not just for the jobs, but for energy security at a time of incredible upheaval in the Middle East. And now this oil is going to go to China. What's going on here? Well, the only thing that I guess we can figure is that the administration has decided they don't want oil produced in the Canadian oil sands. They've decided that, nope, we don't want oil that's produced up here in Canada in the oil sands. The argument is that somehow because of the, that oil will have higher greenhouse gas emissions. So we're not, we're not going to take it and somehow that's not going to be produced. So it's an environmental issue. The only problem with that is that it is going to be produced. It just won't come to us. It'll go to China. And maybe an even bigger irony, although certainly not a bigger problem, but a bigger irony is that the environmental stewardship will then be worse, not better. So if that's the argument, it's going the wrong direction. This oil, which will be produced up here, that's exactly the agreements that Prime Minister Harper is now working on with China. And believe me, China wants the oil. There's no question about that. They've made it very clear. While we continue to put Canada on hold, China is working very hard to make sure that oil comes to them. But let's talk about the environmental aspect of that. Now, instead of bringing this oil in a pipeline down to our refineries, the highest, the best technology in the world in terms of refining. So you put it in a pipeline and you have lower emissions in the very best refineries in the world. Instead, we're going to put it, this oil in tankers. Thousands and thousands of tankers that have to go across the ocean producing greenhouse gas. And it's going to be refined in China where they have lower emission standards, meaning higher emissions. They don't have the same standards we do, so you end up with more greenhouse gas. And then at the same time, we continue to have tanker loads of oil coming in from the Middle East, producing more greenhouse gas because we can't get the oil from Canada. So if that's the argument, what are we doing? We're saying, okay, we're going to say no to the jobs. We're going to say no to the fact that we can be energy independent in terms of oil together with Canada. Between the United States and Canada, we can be independent in our oil needs. We won't need to get oil from Venezuela. We won't need to get oil from the Middle East. Huge national security issue. Look what's going on in Syria. Look what's going on in Egypt. Look what's going on in Iran. Look what's going on with the price of gasoline. And we can become oil independent with our best friend and ally, Canada. But we say no. Instead, after three years, we're going to say no to the project. So Canada sells it to China and we get worse environmental stewardship. I hope the American people fully understand exactly what's going on here, because it's time to act. Right now, Prime Minister Harper is talking to President Hu Jintao, President of China. And believe me, China wants the oil. President Harper and Canada, our closest ally in the world, has waited three years, three years to get a no answer from the administration. So we'll see what kind of agreement he comes back with from China. But the reality is it's time to act. Here's some of the pipelines that are moving crude oil, another product around our country. You really think that that's a problem, particularly when we put in legislation, when we went specifically and found out what the administration's concern was, and we solved it, and we built it into the legislation. The time has come to act. And I call on my colleagues to join me. We've put forward legislation that addresses the concerns, but it's time to act for the good of the American people. Thank you, Mr. President. And I note the absence of a quorum. No, under the previous order.